Welcome to Dig Deep, the mining podcast. In this podcast, we go deep into mining news, hot topics, and live interviews with mining professionals and leading figures in the mining industry. Introducing your host, Rob Tyson, founder and director of Mining International and Mining International Executive, a leading global mining recruitment and headhunting agency. Hi, mining community. Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the mining podcast. And today's guest is Jeff McNamara, who's a co-founder and non-executive director of Torosso Gold, uh, who are focused on exploring gold assets with their potential uh, to be a district scale mining project whilst developing their flagship asset, uh, their El Zorro project in Chile. Um, Jeff has, has over 30 years of international resource sector experience um, has been a founder, a, a geologist, a project manager, and a fund manager, uh, working for the likes of Sociedad General, uh, Ivanhoe Mines, Lionor International, and Western uh, Mining Corporation. Um, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to actually discuss about obviously Tereso Gold, um, what they've been up to, um, what work they've been doing with the local communities. Um, and update what is happening in Chile as a country and obviously as a mining jurisdiction. Hi, Jeff. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks, Rob. Uh, great to be here and uh, appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Yeah, appreciate your time also. So, yeah, as we always start these podcasts off, um, I wonder if you just tell us a little bit about yourself, about your career um, and anything that maybe people may not know about yourself. So I had it Thanks, over to Rob. you. Thank you. So yeah, look, I, I grew up on a sheep and cattle station in, in central Australia, western Queensland. Went to boarding school and university in Brisbane. And then, as you mentioned, was fortunate enough to, when I graduated, work with Western Mining Corporation in Kalgoorlie, Cambalda on their nickel and gold mines. Um, and then I worked in around the Southern Cross area with a company called Lion Ore International that was acquired by Norilsk Nickel uh, for about $6 billion. And then I was lucky enough to go to Mongolia with Ivanhoe Mines then uh, New York with Societe Generale. Uh, and then I worked in Sydney in a private equity fund for a while, now based in Singapore. And uh, I've set up a few companies, as you mentioned, uh, Tesoro Gold, probably the more advanced one uh, with a new discovery in Chile. And it's uh, pretty interesting because it's the first intrusive related gold project or system discovered in Chile. Also have a more nascent copper company called Colpio Minerals in Chile and involved in a technology business. Uh, the technology actually comes from your your home country, from from the UK. So uh, something that the University of Leicester uh, developed about 20 years ago, and it, it dissolves metals in a uh, non-aqueous, low pressure, low temperature solution, a viscous material. So looking to commercialize that over the coming years as well. Um, before we speak about uh, Tereso Gold, I wonder if you just Tell us about those other companies. Just give us a, a quick snapshot. Sure. Uh, so DeCycle is the technology business that's based in London. Uh, so a gentleman called John Murray, uh, an Australian who's based in London, he came across the technology uh, and we established a UK company and brought the technology into that business. And we're looking to commercialise that in the next 18 to 24 months with a company called Gap. Uh, they're arguably the UK's largest e-waste recycler. So the intention is to uh, commercialise the technology on e-waste. As you'd be aware, e-waste is actually e-waste is the fastest growing waste stream globally. Uh, and the UK government's been very proactive in making OEMs and retailers uh, dispose responsibly of that. So that's sort of the opportunity there for us. And then the second company is Colpio Minerals. So that's an ASX listed company, ticker CPO. Uh, I'm the chairman and co-founder there. And we've actually just made a discovery in Chile. A project's called Lana Carina. It's about 350 kilometers north of Santiago in the coastal belt. Uh, and we've, you know, our best intercept to date is uh, 300 meters at just under 1% copper equivalent. So mineralized from surface to about 800 meters deep, about 700 meters of strike and 400 meters wide. Uh, and we're in the coastal Cordillera, so close to infrastructure, a uh, very interesting area and a very new discovery. Um, so that's pretty exciting times for both of those businesses. 
Yeah, we have to come on the podcast again and talk about talk about that project. Um, but that's focused on obviously on Tesoro Gold. I just want to give us a snapshot of of the company. Yes, so Tesoro Gold ASX listed TSO is the ticker. Uh, so myself and uh, a gentleman Zeph Reeves and another gentleman Sergio Rube, he's a Chilean national. Me, we set up the company about eight years ago now, and we went out looking for assets. Uh, and fortuitously, we're doing an earn-in on a project called the El Zorro Project. Uh, we've made a discovery, as I mentioned. That's the first intrusive-related goal system discovered and defined in Chile. Uh, we've got 1.5 million ounce resource there. Uh, we're just growing our board and the business. So Mark Connolly, who some of your listeners may be familiar with from his days at Papillon and Adamus, um, He's just joined as an independent non-exec chairman. Uh, and at the moment, we're drilling on the ground. We've just made a new discovery about 300 metres from our existing Tanera deposit called Tanera East. Um, and we're also drilling at another area about 700 metres away called Drone Hill. So we actually hit our highest grade intercept ever at Drone Hill a couple of weeks ago. So very exciting time. And the objective is to take that 1.5 million ounces Two million ounces in the next 12 months and then three million ounces and beyond in the following 24 months so we do have a three million ounce expiration target on the tenera deposit which is as i mentioned uh, currently 1.5 million ounces um the incumbent president of chile um is is leading left um has that impacted mining activity within the country uh, and obviously has it affected yourselves as well yeah, look, he uh, came in on a mandate of increasing taxes and royalties, specifically in copper. And look, there's been quite a bit of rhetoric uh, from himself and his party around that. The reality is, yes, tax rates have gone up um, for copper miners. Uh, they now sit you know, around that sort of mid-20s for corporate tax. Uh, that's you know, still you know, below or at a similar level to, for example, UK, Canada, Australia, US, uh, and royalties have now also changed for copper. But interestingly, in the gold space, uh, there's no royalty on gold in the country. Um, with new projects, um, there is a five-year royalty holiday for copper projects. As I mentioned, no royalty on gold. Every new project that comes into production in the mining industry uh, actually will neg negotiate an investment agreement with the government with the mines department and you know you will most likely be able to get tax concessions and tax holidays for example one of the things we've been able to do in the last 18 months is we released a a scoping study outlining the preliminary economics of the business uh, and we as part of that you can apply for an export uh, license we were granted that export license and now we will receive a VAT rebate, so that's about 18%. So we've started to receive our VAT back uh, from the government. So it's a very you know, proactive system and a great jurisdiction. You know, you've got BHP, Rio Tinto, Anglo, uh, obviously the local champions, Cadelco, Anifagasta, CAP. So it is, you know, it is a mining jurisdiction. Uh, it's, it's an excellent place uh, to develop and discover projects in, as we found. And where we're operating in Region 3, about 800 kilometres north of Santiago, is very pro-mining. Uh, there are a lot of uh, large-scale projects there, including our largest shareholders, uh, Goldfields. So they sit at 19% of our register. They just commissioned the Solaris Norte project uh, in that region as well. And is there a reason why they've added the royalty tax onto copper and gold is it, it doesn't have a tax royalty is it i mean are, are they encouraging co uh, copper miners to to obviously further develop projects if they're adding that tax and not to gold well they look gold's a more nascent business there just aren't as many gold mines as i mentioned goldfields has just commissioned one kinross is active barrack new monter active in the country but there's a lot more copper mines and, and Chile is the world's largest copper producer mm. and exporter and has the largest reserves of copper. 
So what the government is looking to do is uh, to just receive more income at higher copper prices. So the copper royalty uh, escalates as the price escalates. So as the companies make more money, uh, so will the government. And Chile is by far the most advanced economy in South America, and, and that has come basically from copper mining. So you know what what was outlined by I suppose the president and his party hasn't hasn't fully come to fruition. But what we've ended up with, or what the copper companies have ended up with, is a you know a very you know reasonable approach, uh, as I mentioned. So as copper prices go higher, then so does the royalty. Um, what's the genesis of Torosso Gold, um, and and how did you sort of become involved with the company? Yeah, so as I touched on earlier, a gentleman called Zeph Reeds and a good friend of his, Sergio Rube, uh, they worked in Chile for over a decade, and I actually worked with Zeph back in my early days in Western Australia at an, an underground gold mine called Bounty Gold Mine, which people might know a bit better now as the... Uh, uh, the Mount Holland lithium uh, project that's, that's being developed by Wes Farmers. Um, so Zeph and I worked there. We stayed in touch. He spent a large portion of his career in, uh, he had success in Brazil, made a gold discovery, drilled that out, expanded it. Uh, and that was acquired by Kinross. He then went and worked in Chile in Copper, where he met Sergio. Sergio had worked in Australia for Fortescue. Uh, anyway, Zeph reached out to me uh, just a little under a decade ago. We'd stayed in touch and he said, look, you know, we're seeing some pretty interesting assets in Chile at reasonable valuations. So we set up a, a private company in Australia and went looking at assets. And in the end, we uh, came across El Zorro Project and we liked it because there was some nice drill in the set. But also it's 15 kilometres from the National Highway, the Pan American Highway. 15 kilometres uh, from the Pacific Ocean, which in Australia it's quite common to use uh, highly saline groundwater. So we will be able to use seawater for our uh, processing. Uh, there's also grid power 20 kilometres away, and there's another water option. There's a desalination plant 30 kilometres away, and we're not at altitude, so the average you know, elevation at the project is about 500, 600 metres. Uh, so, you know, it's a great working environment. Uh, it's a one-hour flight followed by a one-hour drive to site from the capital, Santiago. Uh, yeah, so following on, I just want to even just tell us a little bit more about the flag, your flagship project, El Zorro. Um, and I suppose any key, obviously you just mentioned a few char key char characteristics there. Um, is there any other, um, I suppose, uniqueness about uh, the El Zorro project? Yeah, well, as I touched on and, and you alluded to, you know, being in it, the first intrusive related gold system discovered and defined in Chile makes it, you know, extremely unique. And on the back of that discovery, we've uh, expanded our land position. So we've got 570 square kilometres of concessions, arguably the largest and most prospective gold project in Chile. As I mentioned, being close to the coast and the national highway makes it very unique. So our staff stay a 45 minute drive from site at a town uh, called Caldera. Um, and then the city of Copiapo, which is the capital of that region, population about 150,000 people. It's a little over an hour's drive away on that national highway. But most excitingly, the 1.5 million ounces we defined at Tanera, we believe there'll be multiple deposits like Tanera as there typically are with intrusive related gold systems. I think the Tintina province in Alaska and um, uh, the Yukon, so in, in North America and Canada is probably the best analogue. And, and in that region, you've got Fort Knox, Drury Creek, Donlan Creek, Pebble, got these very large deposits. So typically you find multiple multi-million ounce deposits. And we've only explored about 5% of that 570 square kilometres. So not only do we think Tanera will grow to 3 million ounces, but we believe there will be you know, Tanera lookalikes or Tanera analogues within that 570 square kilometres. Uh, and as I mentioned, you know, we're currently drilling some of those you know, close regional targets sort of within two to three kilometres of the existing Tanera deposit. We do think Tanera will join with Tanera East and possibly that Tanera will also join with Drone Hills. So you may have a very large 
you know, greater than three million out a single deposit. Um, just wanted to just tell us how the company engaged with the, the local communities uh, and what are some of the initiatives that you've uh, um, that you've developed with with the, the local communities. One of the other unique things about the project is there's actually no inhabitants on on the property, so it's actually government land. But to your point, and as I mentioned earlier, Caldera is a local port town. So we source not only people, but our, our personnel stay there. Um, and we're you know, very active in that community. Um, as I mentioned, there's the city of Copiapo to the south as well. So um, you know, we have a base in obviously in Caldera. We source most of our personnel between Caldera and Copiapo. Copiapo is actually a, you know, a, a real mining center. So you'll find, you know, most of the larger companies, Barrick, Newmont, some of the bigger copper producers have regional offices there. So we source not only personnel, but most of our service providers from there. Um, act uh, on the property, we've set up a, basically a greenhouse or a, we do a trans, transplant, basically a cactus. So the, it's the Atacama Desert driest place on earth, so there's very little vegetation, very little wildlife, but there is a rare cactus there, it's about the size of your hand. Uh, so we do transplant that cactus and have, have kept that in a nursery. We've got a very good relationship with the mines department. And then there's a third town that where we have we source people from and services, which is to the north, and that town's called Chanarel. Now that's another port town, as is Caldera. But uh, yeah, we yeah, we employ a lot of people from that region and for specifically from those three towns and source a lot of our service providers from there as well. Can you just tell us a little bit about how the uh, exploration and the work programs are going at the moment? Yeah, sure. So currently uh, we're drilling at um, in the valley between our existing 1.5 million ounce Tenera deposit and Drone Hill. So as I mentioned, uh, we actually recently drilled 174 grams there. So that's obviously a very high, it was very high grade, but narrow intercept. So we're now drilling some holes between that discovery at Drone Hill and our existing deposit. Um, we will go back to Tamira East, where we recently made a discovery. So as I mentioned, that discovery sits 300 metres away from the existing resource. Um, what we'll be trying to do in the next 12 months is join both of those discoveries to the existing Tanera deposit. So really there's an opportunity here for Tanera to double, possibly triple in size. If we can show that mineralisation is continuous to where those recent drill results uh, were made and discovered, and we're pretty confident they are. You know, there's structures that are, con structures that are continuous from Tanera to both those areas. And we do have drill holes uh, in between those holes that we've drilled as well that show that there's mineable widths of mineralisation. And at the same time, we're also uh, doing some more field work, specifically sampling, mapping uh, on some of our regional targets. So one's La Brea, there's another Kitsune. Uh, so these projects are sort of about 10 kilometres plus from the existing Tamera deposit. It's soon we've drilled some holes and had success, but we'd like to test. So there's another five regional targets we'll uh, look to test over the next 12, 18 months. Um, just wondering if you can just give us uh, your view on the obviously map, macro outlook for commodities, obviously namely uh, copper. Um, we've obviously had a bit of a spike recently and then obviously it's just come off of that. Um, yeah, just wonder what your outlook is for for copper uh, and maybe any other commodities that you do follow? Yeah, look, obviously follow copper pretty closely in light of the, the sister company of Tesoro, Colpio Minerals. Um, you know, look, I think from a supply demand perspective, it's it's a very positive outlook. You've had, you know, projects, uh, you know, taken out, out of production. So obviously Cobra Panama and Panama is no longer online. Uh, you've seen continual decline in grades. You've seen a lack of discoveries. Um, so we think, you know, there's going to be a significant demand pull. Uh, you know, if you look at electrification, if you look at artificial intelligence, 
and you know, just general infrastructure, there's going to be a much greater need for copper. And there just haven't been the discoveries. Uh, there's been expansions, but as I mentioned, typically you're looking at projects that are getting deeper and have lower grades. So, for example, Colpio Minerals is in a very good position with a you know, 400 metre intercept, sorry, a 300 metre intercept of just under 1% copper equivalent. So there's not many of those type of projects out there and not many discoveries. So I think, uh, you know, the market's very favourable for copper. And I think artificial intelligence on its own you know, is going to drive a lot of demand for copper. Uh, and the other one's obviously gold. And I think uh, you know, gold's looking at a near perfect storm. Unfortunately, you've got conflict, uh, a couple of conflicts that are going. Uh, you know, you've got uh, central bank buying, you know, Turkish, China, sorry, Turkey, China, India, all cent those central banks have been buying in pretty significant quantities. Uh, a lot of the other central banks have also been buying. And then the third leg of that is obviously uh, real interest rates. So, you know, there is speculation, I suppose, expectation that the Fed will cut rates, you know, possibly once or twice before the end of the year. Typically when, you know, when rates are cut, then you do see a uh, significant move in gold. So I think if rates are cut, you know, at some point they will be cut, possibly at the end of this year, then you'll probably see another leg up in gold. Uh, you know, which, which will be great for the industry. Um, what significant milestones, uh, obviously, can we expect uh, to see over uh, the next sort of 12 months uh, for to, to Solo Gold? Yeah, thanks, Rob. So, as I mentioned, uh, currently drilling. Uh, we'll look to accelerate that drilling program. Mm -hmm. So that expansion of Tanera, taking it from that one and a half to ideally two million ounces in the next 12 to 18 months. And then within 24 to 36 months, you know, take that to 3 million ounces. And how we anticipate to do that is infill and step out drilling at both Tanera East and at Drone Hill. And as I mentioned, the other aspect is testing those regional targets. We will be doing some more metallurgical test work on the back of that, you know, so an updated resource probably early next year. We'd look to do an updated scoping study or a updated pre-feasibility study. As I mentioned in the introduction, Mark Connolly from Papillon mm -hmm. Adamus Endeavour Success, he's recently joined the board. We have announced an MOU with a local group called CAP. They're an iron ore miner, but they also mm -hmm. own a lot of infrastructure in the region we're in. So we have uh, an MOU with them uh, giving, potentially giving us access to their desalination plant water. We expect to announce this year another MOU uh, regarding access to grid power, which is 20 kilometres away. So there's you know, multiple things happening on the ground uh, with the business and you know, multiple milestones that we expect to be announcing continuously over the next 12 to 24 months. Jeff, really appreciate your uh, time. Thank you for giving us an overview of Toroso Gold and what, what, your, uh, what your company up to. Um, if our audience wants to obviously follow more, follow the story, um, re obviously uh, receive news releases, um, how can they go about doing that? What social media platform channels are you on? Yeah, so look, uh, there's obviously Tesoro Gold, zorogold.com.au has has a website. There's some contact details there. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn, uh, you know, just Jeff McDamara. And uh, there'll be an email on my LinkedIn profile. So if people would like to email uh, either directly or, or contact via LinkedIn, uh, you know, happy to get in touch and discuss things further. And thank you, Rob, for your time. Much appreciated. Yeah. Um, great. Maybe you can come on uh, uh, later this year or even probably next year. Give us an update on what's what's happening with Toroso Gold and and see whether see whether obviously you're on track to to further expand the exploration that you that you're currently doing and the resource. Yeah, absolutely. Be uh, delighted to give an update uh, and appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hope hope you enjoyed that episode. Thank you for listening. Um, as always. Please keep sharing these episodes far and wide, um, not just to people within our 
uh, industry, people also outside of our industry as well. Obviously, we need to promote gold and copper and obviously our mining industry as a brand to everyone outside of our industry as well, um, just to obviously help with branding as a, and I every time I speak every time I do a podcast branding is always an issue that does come up of the mining industry but we can only improve that by sharing these episodes so thank you for listening and until next time happy mining thank you for listening remember to reach out to Rob via the show notes and be sure to subscribe and leave a review until next time happy mining helping each other to improve the mining industry